What's going on guys, it's Peter here from Untamed Outdoorsman and uh, today I decided to make a video for my house in Ohio um, and basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be making a pond hopping box. So down here I don't have any of my fishing like gear, a lot of it, I have one rod and basically I'm going to build a box based on everything that I would take to the pond with me. So I got some, uh, some new lures, some stuff that I had just down here that I picked up last season. Um, but basically, I went out and bought this brand new Plano box, and I'm just going to organize it based on what I got. Um, so you're going to see like some jigs, some soft plastics, some trailers. Uh, you're going to see some Senkos, because those things always work in ponds. Uh, you're going to see, I might have some flipping stuff, just for like light flipping, because uh, I only got a fluorocarbon set up down here, so you're not going to see like any punching rigs or anything like that. But um, yeah, I'm going to set up the tabs on the way I want it, and then I'll get back to you guys, and I'll show you what I put in it. Okay, guys, so I've got the uh, the box all done now. I'm just going to give you a little quick glance. Okay, guys, so we're we're back now. Um, and basically, what I've done is I've kind of set up the box. Um, I got all the tabs, everything laid out in the box, but I'll basically just tell you, like, how I would set it up for going to uh, specific ponds, basically any pond. Um, especially around here where I'm living at. So, uh, I got a lot of extra stuff on the side that I couldn't fit into the box, but this is just like spare stuff that I can always, you know, take, if I run out of stuff in the box, I can refill, whatever. But, um, basically what I did, so is in the bottom of the box down here, this is where all my terminal tackle is going to sit. So right here, we got Ned rig hooks, huge, huge around here. Um, there's a lot of smallmouth, and, uh, like, where it's early spring now, where you're gonna start, the fish are still a little slow because the water temp's colder. Um, we're gonna need those to get a, a bite. Uh, next thing I have here, we got some, uh, EWG hooks. So, basically just, uh, these are pretty heavy wire, so I kind of use these for flipping. I don't have, um, dedicated flipping hooks, just because, um, I don't have very heavy line on my one setup I have here. So that is going to work perfectly for what I need to do. Um, we got bobber stops. Also goes along with flipping. Worm weights. These are just quarter ounce. Um, just basic stuff. Flipping. You know, there's there's decent bit of cover around here. So I know I get away with it. And then for our finesse bite, we have weedless wacky rig hooks. That's basically, you know, all year round wacky rigs are going to work. But uh, if you're looking for a bite generating bait then it's going to be a wacky rig um second row i did my jigs so right here uh green pumpkin skipping jig caught many fish on this this year i got a white swim jig here the little swim jig trailer caught a fish on that at one of the ponds local to here and then i got another black and jig trailer caught a fish on that at one of the ponds local to here and then I got another black and blue swim jig. Um, the water is very, very clear around here. So uh, you're not going to be seeing a whole lot of um, darker colors. And when you do, it's for specific ponds around here. Um, like the Senkos, that's up next. So we, I have a pack of Linker Log black and blue Senkos in here. Um, those things work great. I had probably... I went out for... Uh, an hour one day at one of the local ponds around here at a campground and I'd probably hit six or seven fish on just the Senko just uh, wacky rig and then you can also Texas rig this if you want on that EWG um, but yeah so next soft plastic I have in here is a Guggen Squad Crack and Craw natural color like I said the water around here is very very clear so you want it to look as natural as possible and uh, basically you can flip these things um, you can cut these appendages off so they fall through mats pretty good. You just got to be really careful with like the 
pound test line I'm using, which is 17 pound fluorocarbon. Um, you know, you can't really flip into the really, really heavy stuff, but you can still get those uh, fish to bite on the outskirts. You know, you can go in a little bit of cover, but you just gotta be very careful. Always check, make sure your line's not frayed or anything like that. And then you can also use these as jig trailers. Um, that's what I do most of the time. This one actually has a crack and curl on it. Just cut it down a little bit because it's a smaller jig. And then you can toss it right on there. And then basically a go-to flipping bait. Uh, you're always gonna want a beaver. Um, and if you wanna get through the mats, what I usually do, if I want a slimmer profile, so this thing falls better, I'll cut these arms off and it just flows pretty good. You can even cut these off, the little antennas. Um, I love that bait. This, I believe, is just a Strike King, um, just a uh, creature bug or whatever it is. Um, but yeah. Then springtime and fall time, pretty much one of like the best baits to use, hard baits wise. It's a jerk bait. It's a Rapala jerk bait. Uh, nothing special, two hook, slow sinking with the rattles inside. Um, it's got like that natural, almost like shiner slash brem color. Uh, great, great. Uh, early spring and like late fall bait uh, when you're looking for the, the bigger bites. And then we're gonna go to top water. So top water, I got this. This is just a uh, KVD Sexy Frog white. Um, pretty much basic color. Another KVD Sexy Frog, but this is a poppin' frog. Uh, this is black, so you get that silhouette in the water. And then this is a Booyah. So basically it's almost like a, uh, like one of the baits I'm going to show you next. It's almost like a whopper plopper. It's got this tail behind it. Um, and then you got like a replacement tail with it that you get. And then the one bait that I just actually recently picked up, never used this before. This is a Western Lures. It's a, a frog, but it walks on top of the water. Uh, this thing's huge. It's about $30. Um, but the thing is crazy. I, I've seen some big big fish catches uh if you look on youtube you can always find videos and stuff of, you know lures if you haven't tried them out or anything um but yeah no this is basically the whole box this is what i bring to the water with me uh you know you can just close it up like this carry it to the water easy one box no hassle at all and then what i usually do in my truck so you saw the box it's got everything in it i'll actually keep it open for you got everything in it i'll keep it off to the side so what i do is I find baits that work and I basically can stockpile them. So I have this thing pretty much fully loaded right now. I'd take it to the pond start of the year. You know, saw plastics, that's the one main thing that you're really gonna go through here. Um, like frogs, yeah, sometimes 50-50, you go through them, you go, you won't. You know, it just depends on the day. Um, obviously hooks, that's all natural. You go through that stuff. But like the jigs, you know, every once in a while you lose one. So what I do, is I go to like a local sporting goods store or whatever, and I pick up extras. So basically when I run out of something in this box, I'll have a spare. So I got green pumpkin hack attack jig, three eighths ounce. And then I got a Denny Brower baby structure jig, another three eighths ounce. And then I picked up a green pumpkin with the blue in it, another hack attack jig. Uh, those are basically the best jigs to use around here. Um, this skipping jig. I like it because it's got the flat head so I can get under some stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I'll keep these in the packages. I'll hang these up in my closet over there. And then all I do is, you know, if I run out of something, go and grab it in the closet. So some other stuff I picked up. Um, KVD Sexy Frog. Uh, this I'm going to keep in the package for now because I have three or four frogs in here. Um, I can always pull this out, but it's a spare. If I lose a frog, just throw this thing in there and go to town. So... Next, one of the biggest uh, bite generators for baits around here is definitely the Senko. Um, I guess, you know, honestly, countrywide, it's Senkos. But um, I went and picked up a few packages. I'll have extras if I ever run out of here. I can just always go to the closet, grab something I need. But yeah, so these are Gary Yamamoto 5-inch Yama Senkos. It's a watermelon in red and black. Whole package of them. Brand, these are all brand new baits that I'm showing you now. Um, this is all just, like I said, it's extra stuff. So then we got Dugan Baits. This is the Watermelon Red, I believe. Yeah, Watermelon Red. Brand new package again. And I keep them all in the packages unless I put it in the box because in the box, you know, you can't transport the packages with it. It's just a hassle. So I keep them all in here nice in the clamshell. I'll hang them up. 
And then when I'm ready to fill up this box, I'll go in there, grab a few out, throw it in there. And then this is the green pumpkin in blue. That's also from Guggen Baits. Honestly, my favorite baits on the market right now is Guggen Baits. So, one thing I do have to pick up another package of. Oh, actually, no, I did. Um, so, we'll go to Cross. Cross, some of my favorite baits. Um, so, what I got for Cross here. I got a water, watermelon red craw. I decided to try this since the water's a little bit clearer around here. I feel like I can get away with it. So, brand new package of Strike King. Um, the two basic brands that I ever use, I only really use Guggen Baits for soft plastics now. But, uh, so you can never go wrong with Rage Tail. So, I picked up a package of those because they didn't have the green pumpkins uh, when I went there. And then I got a pack of the Okie Toby Craws, Kraken Craws. Things are great. Like I said, you can use them for flipping and, you know, you can get the smaller profile with those if you want to chop them down a little bit. And then whenever I flip, a beaver bait is essential unless I'm trying to make a smaller presence and I'll go to the crack and draw. But beaver baits, like I said, essential. So green pumpkin beaver bait, it's a bandito bug. And then you get the Okeechobee crawl once again. So, you know, all of these baits, now they're in packages so I can just go like this. All these, I can hang them up and put them on that shelf. And then, like I said, when I'm ready, this thing gets empty, I'll just fill them up. But yeah, that's it. Uh, that's basically what I bring to the pond. This is my box to go to the pond. Um, and I can catch just a wide variety of, of fish on this. And basically everything I have here will work with fluorocarbon. Um, the top water is a little bit iffy. Um, I definitely would like to have some monofilament on some of this stuff and like braid for the frogs. If I'm throwing a frog, I want braid because uh, every time I'm throwing a frog, I'm throwing into cover and everything else. So, you know, it's kind of a, it's a win and lose situation here, but I'm making the best with what I got while I'm in college. And yeah, that's the full box. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any tips on what do you think I should add to this box or uh, if you have any questions about why I chose certain lures in this box, then just drop a comment um, and don't forget to subscribe. But yeah, that's uh, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching.